Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Veterans Minimum. I'm your host, Nick Dayes, as I'm struggling to get comfortable here in my seat. I don't know why. I haven't podcasted in a while, and that's why. Really? Yeah. Oh, everything everything that went out this week, this past week, has been pre-recorded. I mean, the Kobe stuff, which I guess we'll get into right now. First of all, I'm sorry, Alan, welcome back. Hey, it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Um, Yeah, like I, I, I recorded the emergency podcast for Kobe. I had uh, Dylan... Our buddy Dylan called in, and then um, Dilly, shout out to Dilly, man. Uh, he's been a fan of the show for a while. I got to know him through the Twitch streams and whatnot. And, you know, he's born and raised a Laker fan. He lived out there. So I just wanted to get a different perspective of someone that grew up with Colby literally in his town. You know what I'm saying? So it was cool. Nice perspective. Definitely check that out. And also the podcast and chill with, with our girl Minty Betts from Wager Talk is up there. Really cool. Talking about Vegas and whatnot. But I've already said all my thoughts on what Kobe meant to me, the Kobe situation. Alan, I want to give you that luxury to, you know, let's talk about that whole situation, bro. Like that was when a player retires, you kind of you celebrate them, you adore them, you give them all the praise they deserve. So, but then you see most of them, they go into media or whether it's, you know, they become an analyst on the network or they become a podcast host. They usually stay in the spotlight. Kobe's kind of been out of the spotlight for a bit. I know he won an Academy Award for the best short film. I know he's been getting into different businesses, but you don't really see him doing many interviews until recently. He started, I think he went on like Quinn Richardson and Darius Miles podcast, which I kind of dug. But what really got me... Back to seeing what Kobe's doing is he went on the All Smoke, which is like my new favorite show. I've been watching it almost every episode now. Matt Barnes, Steven Jackson, shout out to them. They're doing phenomenal work over at uh, Showtime. So I, there was just like this 40-minute interview of Kobe. It just came out recently. And he, it was just interesting to hear what he his plans were because he's been so out of basketball. But just seeing the relationship with his daughter, how his daughter pretty much gone back to the NBA because he hasn't been to the Staples Center since his jersey got hung up. So just seeing all these ideas and just seeing Kobe in a real positive space. Because we remember Kobe as this really aggressive, super competitive guy. And yes, he's had his drama. I'm not talking about you know what happened off the court. But I'm talking about you know, there were times where people thought he was going to stay in L.A. He was going to demand trades. He was known as selfish. There were a lot. He was really stigmatized, Kobe. And he was really criticized. But one thing you can never doubt Kobe on was his competitiveness. This guy was a serial winner. They don't make many people like him anymore. I'm talking about athletes. So that's why I always admired about Kobe. Even though growing up, I hated the Lakers. I wanted the Kings to win all the time. So, <laughs> Tim Donny, you ruined my childhood. Uh, you I, ruined a lot of people's pockets yeah, as well. Yeah, the, the, which is far worse. Uh, but then I started appreciating Kobe once I was teamed with uh, Artes, Gasol, Bayern. Like that, those Lakers Celtics series were really fun to watch. And then, you know, just seeing how we went out in terms of retirement. So even though I can't say as a, as a kid, like, I wasn't like enamored with the Lakers. I always wanted them to lose. But of course, you had the respect. But just, you know, his legacy and how much, just not just basketball, but especially all across the world. Like you see his culture, especially in Europe, a lot of soccer teams, whether it's Milan or PSG or Barcelona, giving the praises. This guy was a global icon. And just the way, you know, what, what happened on Sunday, just it's devastating. And, you know, for his daughter as well, someone has such a bright future. And just seeing that relationship, everyone posts that video of them too by courtside. Mm -hmm. You know, him, I guess, giving him her instructions on what's going on in the game. It's such a sweet moment now for it to be gone like that, especially someone that had so much ready to go. And everyone's talking about, oh, he's going to do some great stuff post you know, post playing. And just now, yeah, it was really hard to digest someone that's such an icon. Like, I can't remember last time I was just shaken up by a death. Probably maybe Anthony Bourdain, but obviously Kobe, his influence. Never forgotten. And I hope whether it's the All Star game or NBA, maybe they, maybe we do see hit, uh, the icon become it. I think it would be great. Cause it's going to come, oh, you're talking us, about the logo. Yeah. When he talks about influence, other than MJ, like who's really up there? Well, I mean, I've been super adamant about how in our generation, we're, what, two years apart age-wise? Yeah. Whatever. We're in the same generation. We went to high school together right. pretty much. <laughs> Kobe's in the Mount Rushmore of athletes that meant something. Mm -hmm. And feel free to chime in and tell me what for you would put. But for me, it's, it's Brady, it's Jeter, it's LeBron and Kobe. Oh, it's terms of all around sports, yeah. All around sports, what they meant to this generation, the 2000s to now, you can't write the history books on this new millennium, I think, without those four guys. I think you're spot on. 
I thought you were gonna go basketball. I'm like trying to think basketball. No, no, yeah. I'm saying like uh, uh, across all sports, you know. Yeah. And sure, you can maybe throw in Messi, Ronaldo, but then that opens up yeah. a different can of worms of international. Yeah. But I mean, consistent greatness. Guys have won several championships. You just always see them at the pinnacle of the sport. Like if they do something, it's gonna be reported on, and they just have legions of fans regardless. Yeah, they're, and they're pretty much polarizing figures. All four of them, even Derek Jeter, someone that's respected him, he definitely has his critics. And we know LeBron, Kobe, and Brady have their critics. But yeah, it's, I would say those four. It's a good choice. He, my favorite thing about Kobe, and I don't know if I mentioned this on the the emergency pod because you know I was I recorded that about four hours after it happened, so I was still gathering information. He was the first big name athlete of that stature to embrace soccer, which is forever my first love. And also, he really embraced women's sports, right? He would say in in a recent interview, not too long ago, someone asked him if a woman could play in the WNBA, and he was like, yeah. And, like, he presented a really strong case in an argument. And, you know, girl dad was starting to trend. Uh, The chick from ESPN gave a really cool, like, open story about her relationship with Kobe, the one time interaction. A lot of great stories. Shea Serrano posted great from the ringer, posted a great article. I recommend reading. That's another one. Do you find it crazy that you know I like never met Kobe, wasn't a Laker fan. He wasn't even like a guy that I was super like I used to be very critical of Kobe. I wasn't I kept a, that, yeah. Look, I respect greatness, yep, right? And to. I loved watching him play. Yeah, Don't get me wrong. But he was never a guy that, like, you know, for me, it's always been LeBron, yeah, you know? Same here. But his impact has been so crazy, man. I think it's because he was supposed to be... Dude, you see in the NBA, unlike all other sports, they really embrace their past, right? Shaq and Barkley. I know they're, like, somewhat recent, but those guys are on TNT. You probably have the best sports show on a weekly basis, yeah. right? The halftime show and all that stuff they do in TNT. Bill Russell still gives out the MVP in the NBA Finals, or he's courtside and people show him respect. Like, there's something about the NBA that's completely unique from all the other sports where they really embrace the old heads. Yeah. And sure, do they talk crazy sometimes? Like, yeah, Giannis couldn't play in the 80s. It's like, dude, John Stockton was They're 140 just pounds. Stubborn, and, yeah. <laughs> and I get, I get he's a Hall of Famer, but like, that white guy ain't stopping fucking Giannis. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's this, uh, the NFL's kind of similar in a way. Just in terms of athletes, guys are just going to be hard at it. It's going to be about all And hold on to their yeah. generation. Right, yeah, I, I hear you. But with Kobe, he was starting to get back into the limelight and sitting courtside. You know, a story came out about how two of the three games he went to this year featured the Atlanta Hawks because his daughter, rest in peace to Gigi, she was a big Trey Young fan. Yeah. So that's why he was at a random Nets Hawks game. Like, yeah. what the hell is Kobe doing over there? <laughs> it was like Trey Young and uh, Doncic were yeah. our two favorite players. There was a cool clip where Luke is about to inbound a ball and someone's talking Slovenian to him. Oh. And he's like, what the hell? And he turns around, he's like, it's Kobe. Like, you know, Kobe knew like four different languages oh, yeah. and shit too. So, uh, yeah, man, it's it's really sad. It's you know? heavy. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's the most impactful sports death of our lifetime. Yeah, what else is there? Because the, people are talking about basketball does. I think, ironically, the last one was the late great Drazan Petrovic. Mm-hmm. You know, Croatia's finest. They were comparing to him because he died, I think, in the hel- uh, airplane, I believe. This is like before I was even born. It was like in the 90s. Yeah, yeah the like, number the number three jersey yeah. right, for the Nets. So that was the last like tragic basketball that during, uh, you know, although Kobe was obviously retired, but still someone was in his peak, like someone that was still much in the limelight. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it just, it's really unfortunate because especially him, Kobe, he could have just given so much back to sport just with his mind because he is such a fascinating person, whether it's interviews or just someone that's so knowledgeable game because you can't teach competitors and just his work ethic. I think that's not the thing people have to keep in mind. Like Players have stories, oh, this guy be in gym 4 a.m. shooting jumpers. He would talk about like, oh, he was an NBA at 18. He couldn't drink, so you just go to the gym or you just watch film while guys would be out partying. You know, guys like Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones. My my favorite video that went out was, I believe he's maybe 21, 22 years old, and he's talking at like the rookie symposium. He's kind of like addressing all the rookies and whatnot, and he's talking about like, hey, man, look, I know you guys are probably going to laugh at this, but, you know, life is all about finding a nice woman, you know, starting a family. You know, that's what makes me happy, man. Trying to Try to save your money. Don't go out to the clubs and whatnot. 
And then he turns in typical Kobe fashion. He's like, you know, some of y'all might think I'm soft, but I will check that ass on the court. <laughs> like, don't think I'm soft, man. Oh, he, oh no, he goes after people. Yeah. Like, he was talking to him with Matt Barnes back in the remember, uh, it was Orlando yeah, Lakers the, game, the uh, ball check, and then there was games like Barnes got tip dunk it, like Kobe would elbow him in his stomach. Like Kobe would throw elbows. He gets, he knows how to play mind games, which is why he's a serial winner. I feel like if you if you're really gonna be a serial winner, you do have to play those mind games at times. So. Yeah, I like I like I said, never owned the jersey, hated the Lakers growing up, but he's like you have to appreciate greatness. And a guy like him, especially someone that was making a real impact off the court, someone that was a family man, you just have to admire him. So huge loss and you know, I hope the All Star game they honor him. I just hope whoever going forward this year, they just continue to honor him and you know, it's gonna be cool now. I think the Lakers are gonna be kind of a sentimental favorite now. I think everyone's gonna get behind them. So we'll see what LeBron could do. Oh, yeah, he's definitely, he's going to turn up, man, that's for sure.